Hey, welcome to the first week of the What Would Jesus Undo Life Groups. And I wanna say a big special thank you to all of you who've opened up your homes or you're meeting in restaurants or anywhere to lead life groups. And to those of you that are brand new, thank you for taking a step of faith. We absolutely believe that life is better together. What we're gonna do is real simple. We're going to ask some questions and talk openly. We're gonna read a scripture or two. And then at the end, we're gonna pray for one another. And what's so powerful is that when we come together and the Holy Spirit is present, we grow closer to Jesus and we grow so much stronger. Uh, if you've ever seen the bracelets, the bracelets have been around for years and years. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Great question. What we're doing though is we're asking a question, what would Jesus undo? And there are so many social issues and challenges in the world that Jesus would obviously undo. But in this message series, what we're doing is we're looking strictly at the letters in red, exactly what Jesus said. And we're looking at what would he undo in our own lives to conform us more to his image. Uh, we looked at Revelation chapter three, verses 15 and 16. I wanna read it to you again. Uh, this is what Jesus said to the church in Laodicea. He said, I know your deeds, not just what you say you believe, but I see how you're living, Jesus said. You're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. He said, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. What was Jesus saying? You're spiritually stale. You're depressingly detached. What you're doing, the way you're living, it doesn't just break my heart, but it turns my stomach. It literally makes me want to vomit. What would Jesus undo? One of the things that Jesus would unquestionably undo is spiritual indifference. It's such a problem in this world today, spiritual indifference. We talked about two causes of spiritual indifference. And what I wanna do is give you the question first, so you can think about it. Then I'm gonna give you the two causes. Then I wanna wrap back and give you the question again. At the end of this question, you can press pause and you can talk about question number one. What are the two causes of spiritual indifference? Number one, self-sufficiency, self-sufficiency. This is what Jesus said to the people in Laodicea. He said, you say I'm rich. We see this all over the world today. I have everything I need, I don't need anything else. You say I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and I don't need a thing. But this is what Jesus said. He said, you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. You think you have everything that you need but you don't have what really matters, the spirit of self-sufficiency. Many of you, you see this in people that you work with, they think they have everything and they don't need God. But the reality is sometimes the way we live, Jesus might say to us, I know your deeds, you have a spirit of self-sufficiency. Second problem is distractions uh, of this world, distraction to the world. Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower uh, in Mark's gospel. And he said, the worries of this life, some people sow some seeds, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke out the word, making it unfruitful. This speaks to me so much. Uh, God has planted spiritual seeds in us. They're starting to grow, but what happens? The worries of this life, there's so much to worry about, so much going on, so many activities, so much busyness. The deceitfulness of wealth, I need more, 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 more. The desires for other things, I, I want all these things in the world, what does it do? It chokes out the word. I know that many of you can relate to this very thing. Um, question, which cause of indifference do you most easily identify? Of these two things, self-sufficiency, distractions of this world, which cause of indifference do you most easily identify? If I'm gonna be real honest with myself, I'd have to say it's distractions of this world. It's the fact that the kids are going so many different directions. If I can be really, really honest, it's the reality of sometimes I end up doing church work instead of actually pursuing God intimately. And if I wanna go even to the deepest level, the time when I was probably uh, most spiritually indifferent in recent years was between years 11 and 13 of the church. And this was a season where I was just honestly hurting. Uh, I was overwhelmed. The church didn't feel very healthy. And instead of pressing into the things of God, I was doing everything I could to just focus on self-survival, self-preservation. And it was one of the emptiest, darkest, uh, most spiritually vulnerable times of my life because instead of being passionate for the things that mattered, I was spiritually indifferent. 
Let me ask you again, two big causes would be self-sufficiency or the distractions of this world. Let's be really, really honest. There's power and when we're truthful. The question is this, which cause of indifference do you most easily identify? Let's press pause and talk about it. All right, let's dive into the second question, which could actually play off the first one that you discussed. Most of us don't want to say there's a lukewarm attitude in our lives. But if I'm going to be honest, there have been different seasons of my life where I've absolutely and completely been lukewarm spiritually. I've been spiritually indifferent. In the message, we talked about six different ways that we might live with lukewarm indifference. Here's the question, and then I want to go through this. I'm going to go through it a couple times um, real slowly because I want you to focus and concentrate. And again, fight for truth. Tell the truth. Be honest. There's power in transparency. Here's the question. Of the six indifferent spiritual challenges that we covered in the message, if you'll remember, I talked about six specific things. Uh, of the six indifferent spiritual challenges, which one is the biggest challenge for you? I'm gonna read through them one time completely, real slowly, then I'm gonna go through a second time and I want you to pick the one and talk about it. We cannot defeat what we cannot define. Let's define what the challenge is and then let's talk about it and pray for healing in this. So which one of these six would be the biggest problem for you? Uh, first of all, maybe you're more concerned with impressing people than you are living for God. What does everybody else think of me rather than God, what do you think of me? Number two, Maybe you're obsessed with life on earth rather than eternity in heaven. It's all about the now. It's all about this. It's all about the things of this world instead of trying to glorify God eternally. Number three, maybe you rationalize sin without truly fearing God. There may be ongoing sin in your life and you don't fear God. You're not confessing it. You're not repenting. It's not that you're perfect, but you're just living in unconfessed, unrepentant sin. Uh, it might be, number four, is that you believe in Jesus, but you rarely share your faith. You just, you, you're, you kinda, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm happy, I'm good, me and Jesus are fine, and so you're not sharing your faith. Number five, maybe you only turn to God when you need him. You believe in him, but he's not really first in your life. He's a tool you put on the shelf, and whenever you need the tool, you pull the tool off the shelf. You believe in God, but you, you really don't turn to him unless you need him. Or number six, if you're really gonna be true, you're just not much different from the world. You say you follow Jesus, you say you believe in him, but there's not real evidence that your life is completely committed to him. Let me go through them again, and then you pick one. Again, the question is, of the six indifferent spiritual challenges, which is the biggest challenge for you? You ready? You're more concerned with what people think than what God thinks. You're obsessed with life on earth rather than eternity in heaven. You rationalize sin, you don't really fear God. You believe in Jesus, but you're not telling anybody. You're not sharing your faith. You only turn to God when you need him. Honestly, you're not much different from the world. Let's call it what it is. You cannot defeat what you cannot define. Question number two, and then press pause. Of the six indifferent spiritual challenges we covered in the message, which one is the biggest challenge for you? All right, I hope you're hanging in there because I know those were a couple of deep questions. And the good news is when we really open up with other people, when we pray for each other, when we're in God's word and the spirit is working, we can be conformed to the image of Christ. Let's go ahead and get real practical. What can we do? It's likely that all of us in some pocket or some area of our life, we recognize there's a little bit of spiritual indifference. How do we overcome that? When the message I talked about what I try to do, and that is every single day, I try to do at least one thing that requires faith. Do one thing that requires faith. In fact, this is what Jesus said in Revelation 3.19. I love as he's talking to the people in Laodicea, he says this, I correct and discipline everyone that I love. In other words, if you feel a little bit convicted right now, it's not because God's mad at you, it's because God loves you. He wants something better for you than worldliness and lukewarmness in your own life. So this is what Jesus says. He says, so be diligent. And that's what you're doing. You're at group right now, you're seeking Jesus, you're being diligent. And then he says, 
turn from your indifference. Turn from your indifference. What are we gonna do? We're gonna turn from our indifference and we're gonna turn toward faith. The question I'd like for you to think about is this. What is something that you can do tomorrow that requires faith? What is something that you can do tomorrow that requires faith? We talked about this in the message. You may stand up for something that's right, even though you know people may make fun of you. You may give something, even though you know it's gonna be a stretch for you to give. You might apologize to someone that you hurt, even though you don't know how they're gonna to respond to it. Or you might try to forgive someone that hurt you, even though you don't feel like trying to forgive that person. You might reach out to someone who doesn't know Christ. You might pray for a miracle. It could be any number of different things, but I want you to do is think ahead about tomorrow and try to answer the question, what is something that you can do tomorrow that will require faith? Uh, what my family is doing right now is we're praying for a miracle. Uh, talked about Mandy and her health issues. My third daughter, uh, Anna, has mono right now, and she has a um, similar genetic dysfunction that Mandy has, and it was mono that set Mandy off into the now almost two-year struggle that she's had physically. And so we're praying for a miracle still for Mandy, and we're praying now, and I will pray tomorrow for a miracle for Anna. That she'll be completely healed, strong, overcome this, not see any residue, not see any uh, physical challenges like Mandy has battled with, but by the name of Jesus and by his stripes, by faith, we're believing for miracles. Every single day, we're believing for miracles. Third question is this, we're not gonna stay lukewarm. We're gonna be hot, passionate for the things of Jesus. Let's not just hear God's word, but let's be doers of his word. Here's how we do it. Answer this ahead of time and then live it out tomorrow. Question number three, and after this, you're going to answer it and then you're gonna pray for one another and you're gonna pray and pray and believe that God's gonna spark this fire in you. Because what would Jesus undo? He would undo spiritual indifference. Question number three, what is something that you can do tomorrow that will require faith?